have a single-use plastics reduction plan. Uh, this is for government. Why are you aiming it specifically at government? We have to start somewhere. And it's fair to say since the Blue Planet 2 series, uh, plastic is now uppermost in a lot of people's minds, particularly marine plastic uh, and pollution. But uh, the chief minister who uh, initiated this strategy felt that government should set an example. On a small island, it's, it's easy for us to contain and do what we're doing within government. When I say that, it hasn't proved to be quite as easy as we thought it would be. But yes, we need to set an example and set a, a course for the future. So we've seen a drive, we've just had Tinwall Day and um, there was a, a drive there to reduce the amount of single-use plastics. You could see how there would be quite a lot of plastic potentially used at an event, but on a day-to-day -day basis, how much single-use plastics does government actually use? Well, I can't quantify that, um, but all I can say is the government is, is a large employer. And if you look across all the departments uh, and the number of staff involved, there is quite a lot of single-use plastic. Uh, floating around, for want of a better word, in the system. And uh, the idea is to reduce that. Uh, in my department, for instance, uh, we don't, where we can, use any plastic at all. We, we recycle. We have sandwiches bought in. Unfortunately, there's still some plastic wrapping on that, but we try and strip it out and recycle where possible. But all our drinks uh, in mugs or cups, um, which are, are, are eminently sustainable. Um, but if you look across other areas of a government, they're still using plastic cups. And I don't think we use straws. I think we have grown up for straws. But um, there, there is an element of, of using plastic bottles once, water, etc. And, and quite a lot of it. So we, we, we are striving to to get that out of the system and uh, use uh, reusable containers, cups, wherever possible. And you're talking about uh, sustainability champions for reducing and recycling. I mean, are they in every department or, or how, how does that process work? They are in every department. And in fact, I've been specifically about my department. We've had a meeting. We've looked at where we're going. I have to say, uh, DEFA, as it should be, is doing quite a good job. But when you look at some of the other departments, it's not. And these sustainability champions don't even bring, uh, sorry, don't just bring um, something to the table with regard to the department, but they also add to the overall strategy. And as we roll this out over the whole island becomes more public it helps inform the situation and they're also good uh, uh, mouthpieces for uh, future reduction in single-use plastic i think it's pretty uh, much a no-brainer that people will sign up to this now it also mentions government um, banning balloon releases i mean does that happen often it sounds like a strange thing to have within the action plan well there aren't a lot but Balloon releases, uh, depending on what kind of balloon it is, uh, the little lantern balloons would be a disaster at the moment uh, because of the uh, dryness of our uplands particularly. Um, but uh, plasticky uh, type balloons, uh, they drift down into the sea, into the rivers, onto the land. They can be eaten and can cause problems just like any other plastic. You also mentioned uh, a new procurement criteria. Now, now that potentially has cost implications for government if you're looking at uh, purchasing items which don't contain single-use plastic, I'm guessing. Uh, it does, and uh, we need to look at that because obviously the emphasis has been on value for money, but we need to look at environmental aspects. But of course, if you buy in something that can be used more than once, uh, it may appear more expensive, but it might actually be cheaper in the long run. And we need to be environmentally conscious and to be honest, from my perspective, it costs a few more pence to do that, then so be it. And certainly from a procurement point of view, uh, that will be one of the uh, points that uh, become relevant in the future. Now you say government needs to set an example, lead by example, by rolling out this plan within government itself. Um, but government can only do so much. So to what extent are you going to be trying to roll out these measures into the broader public in the Isle of Man. I mean, you had in in your report there is mention of the introduction of a plastic bag levy here within two years. I mean, that's something's that been talked about for years and years here. Yes, and uh, I have oft been quoted as saying that it, it, it is happening and it 
indeed it has happened to a certain extent with all of the larger uh, retailers and I've just heard recently that the Co-op have signed up as well um, the problem was if we'd have just imported the plastic bag levy from the UK it didn't apply to firms that employed less than 200 people well um, that would have precluded most of the firms uh, that operate in uh, the island so we, we used a, a sort of carrot type situation and encourage people and all the major retailers are now signed up. Um, we will, um, over the next two years, re uh, introduce a, a mandatory um, plastic bag levy. I say we will, we hope to. Um, and, but uh, that depends on how many of the larger retailers haven't signed up. And that plastic bag levy may be more to do with how they use the funds they generate, because at the moment they can use the funds for whatever they like, They've all committed to spend on charities in the Isle of Man, but we would like to make sure that that money is captured on Ireland. So that plastic bag levy may actually bring some regulation into the collection of the levy and where it ends up. Now, there's mention of a plastic-free island. Uh, lovely notion, but uh, it, presumably that is something that is beyond the government's control, given that so much that comes into the island has plastic, it involves plastic, uh, and is imported and is necessary for, for everyday life in industry, in in, in home lives. Yes, uh, this is one of those terms that's banded around and certainly um, some jurisdictions have talked about being plastic free. Well, it, that's pie in the sky. You only have to look around this studio at the amount of plastic. We are reliant on plastic and will be uh, for, for a long time unless some super material comes about, but even that will probably have some disposal problems. I think the reality is we want to reduce the amount of single-use plastic uh, where it, it, it's uh, obviously wasteful. It costs money to make and uh, using it only once is, is not really sustainable. But in terms of plastic generally it's not the use of plastic that's the problem it's a disposal method that is uh, really the key issue if plastic is disposed of properly and in the first world we are getting a lot better at that and, and on island we incinerate a lot of plastic um, we should recycle plastic that has high value and at the end of the day that that doesn't have have high value if we turn it into energy from waste and we end up with a small amount of bottom ash that uh, does away with landfill to me that's a win-win situation and in terms of educating people i mean you've got programs in schools so the schools are on board with i suppose being greener and reducing practice uh, plastic um, and you've also got charities like the Max Wildlife Trust and Beach Buddies who do a lot to raise awareness about that and physically go out there and pick it up. What is government doing on that front? How is it partnering with, partnering with those organisations? Well, UNESCO Biosphere has uh, led to a, a, a driver, as it were, in terms of uh, the environment, sustainability, uh, resilience, and uh, uh, we are doing a, a good job particularly through our biosphere champion in that respect. But we seed funded uh, Beach Buddies for some time. And I have to say Bill Dale, uh, well deserved his uh, award at Timwell Day, has done an excellent job in promoting that. I've been part of it and about 10% of the island have signed up at one point or another and been involved. And that gives people a real indicator of even when our beaches look relatively clean when you actually get out there and look at what's on the beaches they aren't that clean sadly a lot of the rubbish that is washed up in plastic waste doesn't emanate from the island and i understand anecdotally that uh, the surrounding jurisdictions have found their beaches cleaner as uh, we've picked up plastic that was obviously destined for their beaches and um, so it's that's doing a great job and uh, uh, long may it be so but we ought to be addressing these issues uh, at the, the, the start of the process and it's down to the general public and the education programs are there. I don't think anyone could say they haven't heard about plastic waste and the problems it can cause and I'm still quite amazed that we find things washed up on our beaches like wet wipes and bottles, things that could easily have been disposed of responsibly and probably ended up in the incinerator. How much can government really do, apart from being hard-lined on an issue like uh, the irresponsible disposal of plastic by fining people? I mean, how, how much is this in the government's hands and how much is it really down to the public to behave in a responsible way? 
Well, we can lead by example, but if you look at uh, fast food vendors, um, and they are a source of uh, uh, an annoying amount of uh, litter, um, it, the Isle of Man on its own, uh, difficult because we don't drive manufacturing processes and we're small players. But pressure bought in the UK and uh, Europe or worldwide is already starting to change their uh, behaviour and the products are being packaged in more sustainable ways or with material that can be recycled. So we can we can help push that process, but it's it would be difficult for the Isle of Man government with 84 or 85,000 people to actually start driving those processes. Lead by example is the key. Now, we've touched on, on government and uh, education in schools, the third sector and um, the general public in their day to day lives. But what about industries that use a lot of plastic? For example, fishing and farming have traditionally do tend to end up with plastic with what they're doing. Uh, yes, plastic is uh, an essential component uh, in, in both of those uh, sectors. In agriculture now, we have a collection scheme for waste plastic because it was recognised some time ago that this can be a problem. But alas, sometimes uh, the wind takes the plastic before it's collected. Um, but I think farmers are definitely being more responsible about how they use it and how they dispose of it through the various schemes. In terms of fishermen... Uh, we only had to walk along our beaches and have a look at the uh, amount of netting, rope, etc. that gets washed up. Uh, we have just recently committed to c continue to support a fishing for litter scheme, uh, which means that there will be receptacles at uh, Peel at the moment. We hope to roll this out to Port St Mary soon, where fishermen, if they do pick up marine waste, they can dispose of it without any cost or inconvenience to themselves. And that also applies to their tackle etc that they might have disposed of at sea there's now a method of disposing of it that won't cost them anything